Welcome to the NetBroadcasting.tv Continuing Customer Education Series. In this video we're going to cover Customizing the JW Player. To best take advantage of this video, it's best to have your PDF provisioning document handy, similar to this mock-up, where instead of having a real customer name, we're just using the name Demonstration. When you get an account with NetBroadcasting.tv, you get three ways to display your video on the web. The first and easiest is our player page. To get to demonstration of the player page, which is included in your provisioning document, we scroll down to the section under Flash Player Creation. We give you a URL to your player page with an included demonstration video that we include on all accounts. It's called FilerPilot450k.mp4. Inside the PDF file, we can just click on that and it allow it, and it will open the player page and begin playing the video automatically. For this purpose, we've included a sample of the 1000 by 125 pixel banner that can be included on all player pages. The customer name is given. In this case, it's Demonstration. And Flash Player is after that. We also have a church version of this player page that includes a few other extra features. Here's what that looks like. Still the same banner, um, same player. It gives you a note-taking area where you can type things. And then it gives you a King James Bible search area where you can type in any phrase and search any part of the King James Bible. A very simple one, but yet it was asked for by a number of our church customers. So we included it, and even for church customers, it can be uh, turned on or turned off as needed. You can also provide us the top banner, if you would like, and change it from time to time by simply just contacting customer service and emailing us the uh, 1000 by 125 banner that you create should be created as a JPEG file. Okay, going back to the provisioning document under the section called Flash Player Creation, again we have three ways of displaying your Flash video. The first we just showed you our included player page, which you can link to directly from your website. The second is our script that we provide a licensed version of the JW Player for you to drop on your own website. Here's a sample of that script. Your script may be slightly different than this because for this demonstration we've changed some things in here for security reasons. The first things that are that you can change you'll notice in the directions here you can change the red 640 in the script below to any value that you want. That's the width of the player. The height of the player is set at 480. You can change that number anytime you want to. This would allow you to change your aspect ratio on your player from 4x3 to 16x9 as needed and change it to any size that you want. The other things that are easy to modify is you can allow full screen if you want to, true or false. Now this just gives the player the function of going to full screen. It doesn't force full screen. The other thing you can change is uh, whether you want the player to auto start or not. Just set this value down here to either true or false. Again, here's a look at the JW player pretty much as it's provisioned on your account. But what if you wanted to change it and change some of the features on it beyond the few uh, size and auto start and allow full screen uh, variables that we just mentioned? The best way to do that is simply just go to the JW Player Customization Wizard. The best way to find that is just Google JW Player Wizard. It's under longtailvideo.com. All of the netbroadcasting.tv flash players are flash players with an RTMP stream. 
So in the drop down, you want to be sure that you find that one and not just a progressive download player. So do that first. Then when we expand each of these flash var areas, you can see where the customization comes in. Each of them can be changed individually and there's a number of different fields in each section. The first part we were going to need to change is the embed parameters. So we'll look at that and we'll see the default in here is player.swift. That's an included Swift file that's in the uh, JW player configuration page. So for this demonstration, we're going to leave the player.swf in that box because it will work there. The next two fields, you can change the uh, height and width of the player as needed. Playlist is not typically used for a regular player. We're going to have a later video on how to use a playlist file. Under File Properties, these are just different things you can place on your player. The author, the description, the duration. Image is an image file, a JPEG, that you can place on your player when it is not playing. In other words, if you're not using autoplay and the player comes up, you want an image file in the player. And each of these you can hover your mouse over and it will tell you more about each one of these fields. Under File Properties, the only one that is required, all of these are optional except for the file name. For a live stream, for example, if your stream name was live stream, you would just type in the stream name there. It does not need any extension after it. If it is a video, then you would type the video name, the file name there, whether it's um, In this example, we've typed FilerPilot450k.mp4. That assumes that that video is in your streaming folder and not in a subfolder under the streaming folder. If it had a subfolder under the streaming folder, you would just simply add that here. We're going to assume that it was in a, a uh, subfolder called subfolder. So do uh, the folder name, the subfolder name, a slash, and then the file name. Multiple subfolders can be added in that same way. So for this demonstration, we'll remove the subfolder. Going down, colors are pretty much self-explanatory. You've got a back color, a front color, a light color, and a screen color. All those can be clicked on and added from the palettes shown here. For now, we'll just pick some different colors here for demonstration reasons, and we'll probably have a very festive looking player after this, but for this purposes that'll be fine. The layout field allows you to control how the player controls are displayed. The control bar can be placed above, below, or over the video screen by selecting these options. The next three fields, playlist, playlist size, and dock, have to do with playlist displayed adjacent to the player and we're going to cover those in a later tutorial. The skin feature allows you to have an XML file that defines a new skin for the player and those are available on the JW website. The behavior area tells your player how to behave on your web page. For example, you can tell it to auto start when the page loads. Right here, true or false the number of seconds to buffer before your video begins to play. Leaving the buffer value blank gives you the default setting which is usually fine there. Icons hides the icons in the display. An item has to do with playlists which again we'll cover in a later tutorial. Mute means the uh, player would come up muted or non-muted. The quality field specifies high quality playback which should always be set to true. Repeat and shuffle are used in playlists, which we'll cover in a later tutorial. And stretching tells how video stream size is different from the player size will or will not be adjusted to fit. Your options there are uniform, fill, exact fit, or none. The best thing to do is experiment with those with your video 
and see what is best for you. The volume is a value from 0 to 100, which sets the audio volume percentage on startup. Under External Communications, Link Target is not used. Plugins will be covered later, but it is very important to enter the RTMP URL that is provided with your netbroadcasting.tv account. There is a different URL for live and on-demand streams. You can find that URL under Option 3 of your Live Player Creation portion of your provisioning document. For a on-demand stream, which is what we're looking at here, that would be found here. You can simply highlight that in your provisioning document and copy it and go back to the JW Player wizard and paste it in right here. Next we click the Update, Preview, and Code button and it will give us all those colors we created. And if we hit the Play button it should play our fighter pilot video, which it does. And that actual video is playing from your account on the netbroadcasting.tv CDN network. Then below the player you will get your embed code. This code needs to be modified yet and we're going to show you how to do that in just a minute. But there is a bug in the JW Player website so look at the top line of the code and be sure that swfobject.js is in the top line. If you don't see that go to one of the other options here and then click SWF object and then SWF object again if you don't see it and eventually you will find it. You will notice here that it says for HTML5 failover and to use more advanced JavaScript interaction use the JW in better. HTML5 failover is not supported under RTMP streaming for the JW player. There is some simple HTML5 code included under the iPhone and iPad portions of your provisioning document. So now as we said this newly generated code needs to be modified and customized specifically for your account. So next what we want to do is copy just a portion of this generated code over to a word processing program where we can merge it with our license player code that's in our provisioning document. Here's exactly how we do that. Up in about the fourth or fifth line here, we find the letters MPL. And it's right before the width and height variables for the Flash Player code. So what we want to do is get the uh, right before that, all the way down through the SO in so right. Not the period, not the dot, but just the SO in so right. So we're going to do that. We're going to copy that, Control C. And then we'll just go open Word, and this could be any text editing or word processing program. And let's just for simplicity here and keeping us from being confused, let's label these. This is going to be our generated code. And Control V to paste it. And next we're going to put in our provisioning document code. Then we'll go over to our provisioning document. And we'll highlight this from script to script, control C. Go back to our word processor word here in this case, paste it. Now, we want to merge these two. So we want to grab this whole code up here all the way down, copy that. And then inside the um, provided code in the provisioning document, we're going to again highlight it the exact same we did before all the way through the SO in right and paste the new code in there. Just like that. And then you'll notice here that it added an extra space. We want to be sure that's not there so that we get so dot right player. And then inspect our paste job and be sure that pasted well. It looks like it did up here in this area. So now we have a completed script that will take into account all of the changes that we made in our JW Player uh, configuration wizard. So I've taken this code just as you see it here with the exception I changed the um, uh, URL removes to the actual URLs. 
Remember, we did that for security reasons because that's for customers only. And uh, have taken this code and pasted it onto a page on our net broadcasting test server. And when we do that, here's what we get. There's the player with all those pretty colors we selected. And if we hit play, it will play the fighter pilot video just like we entered it in. You've just had a taste of the flexibility of the JW player. In a future tutorial, we'll look at the skin options. Additionally, there are Drupal, Joomla, and WordPress modules and plugins for the JW player. If you want to get a head start, Google JW Player and Skins or Drupal or Joomla or WordPress and you will find a wealth of information on how to use these modules and plugins.